Welcome everyone, I am the host for this channel, drop a like to show your support, and subscribe if you are new here. Let's get into the video. Back when I was in first year, I was sitting in maths class. It was third period of the day, I think it was double art or DT, I didn't like it, whatever it was. We were finishing off a nice, warm March day. About 15 minutes into the class, all of a sudden we hear a massive bang. We were jolted out of our math-induced comas by the sound. The teacher immediately told us to stay in our seats and walked to the next class to find out what on earth that noise was. It was then announced over the intercom that all students were to remain in their class for the rest of the day. We spent the rest of the day up there doing our homework and speculating what the hell was going on. What on earth was that sound? People were genuinely worried. My teacher also looked extremely worried and I'd never seen her worried in my whole time of being with her. When the end of the day came, we were escorted to the buses. Usually, we would walk down unattended. We were taken down escorted on a long detour around the school, whereas we would normally just made the journey in 30 seconds. This new route took us about two minutes. The first sign of trouble was seeing three marked police cars at the front of the school. The second sign was seeing two officers with MP5 submachine guns standing by one of the main student entrances. The third and final warning sign was the fact that one of our four large pane glass windows to some of the front facing classes had been shattered completely inwards. On the bus home, further speculation suggested it might have been a bomb. Others said it was a massive firework of some kind. Some of my friends had been closer to the source of the explosion and said one of the teachers had a breakdown later on that day. The next day, the windows had been repaired, but an area of the school was still damaged and marked off. There had been lockers beside a small set of stairs and double doors in front of the steps. The doors were splintered and the lockers no longer there. It eventually emerged that the source of the explosion had been a quite a large firework. The school seniors had fashioned a time display fused somehow using cigarettes or something that allowed them to detonate it when there would be no one in the vicinity. I'd actually forgotten about this incident until I saw the title of this thread. All of the memories came flooding back. I couldn't quite believe it. How on earth could our school mess up this bad and have the police stood outside guarding, taking kids on detours to get to the bus with armed guard escorts? Once, when I was sat in high school, over the intercom we heard the principal say something to the effect of, Will Mr. San Jose please report to my office immediately? Now, this was something that my teacher immediately looked anxious about. It turned out, as she stopped looking at the board and actually teaching our class, it was a alarm. This was a code way of telling all the teachers to immediately lock down the classrooms, bolt to the doors and keep all students safe inside. It was the rehearsed phrase which basically translated to teachers lock your doors and hide your students. So immediately the doors were locked and the lights were turned off while we hid in the corner of the classroom as instructed to by the teacher. My class was being on the first floor close to the main office we were the first to have the security guard come by. All the students were lined up in the hall, shoes were removed and every one of us patted down by this middle-aged, overweight and highly underqualified security guard with the help of a single police officer watching by. Anything we weren't supposed to have on us was confiscated. Nail clippers, all of the cell phones, mp3 players, what have you. This was repeated for every class on all four floors of the main building. All in all, about 80% of the students got searched. No one knew why, and we spent the next two hours just sitting in our classroom like, what the hell just happened? 
as the security guard and the single police officer went door to door to every single classroom on each floor, we were left just wondering what on earth we should do. I remember even our teacher had no idea what to do. She didn't know whether to continue with the lesson or to just have us sit there still with the lights off and the door bolted back up. Once we had all been searched, she was really confused and so were we. The history teacher on the fourth floor had apparently kicked off and gone absolutely nuts at the security guard for not giving an explanation as to what was happening. Apparently, she wouldn't even let them open the door and kept it bolted, thinking that the security guard was some kind of a shooter and would immediately unleash hell as soon as she opened the door for them. Apparently that's a common tactic, that they pretend to actually be the security or the police to knock on the door. I've seen videos of it, but you have to remember this story took place in 2009. This was many, many years ago. Eventually, we spent the rest of the day literally just sat in the classroom, not even being allowed to leave to use the toilet. The security guards and the police went floor to floor, they confiscated everyone's phones, they looked through everyone's shoes, clothing, and even patted them down. What on earth was going on? We'd never had this in all the years we'd been at this school, something wasn't up. Eventually, news broke that one of the students had given away a fake bomb scare to a local news agency, which then reported it to the police immediately. Funnily enough, they only sent one police officer down, it looked like he couldn't care less. It was a good job we all found out about this fake bomb scare after school was finished, because that would have probably added to the worry and had half the students fleeing and running out of the school building. It was a warm afternoon. We had two lessons left, and if I remember rightly, they were maths. Double maths to be sure. I hated it, but I was in the group with my friends, and we used to just mess around the whole lesson anyway, so it was no big deal. The teacher we had for double maths was soft, never really told anyone off. I can't remember her name. I think it was Mrs. Gobsley or something, something weird like that. But she was literally a 60 year old lady who would never yell at even a bee, let alone us. This made the lesson a bit of a run around and we never really got any work done because of this. I guess she was the equivalent of a supply teacher that has no idea what's going on. Our school backed off into a big woodland. It must have been hundreds if not thousands of acres. It was this massive forest where it was bordering between us, our field and obviously our school building. There was a small track around the field that was painted on with like white lines. I can't remember exactly what we used to do on that field but I'm guessing we had sports day there. One day I was looking out the window where the mass glass was. The window was situated just looking over this field out into the forest. We could hear these noises at first which sounded like guys yelling. So bear in mind it was extremely hot. We had all the windows open and the AC on at the same time. People were going nuts about how we shouldn't be in school because it was so hot. So there we are, in math class. Pretty much the whole class is just messing around, not paying attention. And we start hearing guys yelling in the distance. I had the closest seat to the window, so I think it was maybe only me and a couple of people sat next to me that could actually hear the yelling at first. Eventually, the yelling got closer. It sounded like authoritative yelling, almost like the yelling police officers give when they yell orders at you. I was getting a bit confused as to what was going on there. Perhaps a student had run away? Was a teacher yelling at a kid? Or getting them disciplined? I have no idea. I didn't think much of it and I just continued to ignore it. It could have been someone yelling at their dog for all we know. People tended to walk their dogs around that forest all the time. Eventually, another 5 or 10 minutes pass, and the yelling gets even louder. This time, we start hearing sirens off into the distance. The sirens get closer, and actually sound like they part almost opposite our school. There was an entrance to the woodland, which must have been about 100 or 200 meters away from the entrance to our school. So as you can imagine, we practically heard the sirens as if they were on top of us. One siren after another, it sounded like an army of police cars were turning up. Eventually the yelling got louder and there were even more voices. 
At this point, we could make out exactly what was happening. It was police officers ordering someone to get on the ground, and then my heart sunk. I heard the words, drop the weapon. Now at this point, everyone in the class was listening to these sirens and realized something was going on. And although all the other students couldn't really care less, because at that age, all they really cared about was messing around. But as I looked up, my teacher seemed worried. She looked around and didn't know what to do. We could now hear sirens and clearly hear men shouting drop the weapon. Something wasn't right at all. Our principal immediately signaled over the tannoy system that we needed to all keep down. We needed to keep our doors locked and we stay secure until the whole place has been checked. So there it was. Immediately our school had gone into lockdown. The windows were all shut, the door was dead bolted and we were told to get under the desk. How that's supposed to help I have no idea. But there we were. The shouts were still going. All I could hear was the shouts from the police. Whoever they were shouting at to drop the weapon didn't seem to be shouting back at them. And for some reason, they didn't seem to be listening. The weird thing about this was that the voices weren't going further away or getting closer at this point. It had now been 15 minutes that this whole thing had been going on. They still hadn't managed to get this guy to basically surrender. What had gone from a crazy pretty much undisciplined lesson of maths where everyone was just messing around and the teacher was practically teaching nobody, had now gone from the class being dead silent, everyone under the desks with no sound. Everyone's ears were ready. We were all listening out to see what was about to happen next. Some of the girls were even starting to cry in this class and that's when we knew that something really wasn't right. The same girls who five minutes earlier had been laughing, playing and messing around with markers. This was something that was about to get really serious. The shouting continued, it got louder and now it seemed like the police had dogs. I could hear so many barking dogs out there, sounded like German Shepherds or some of the really really big breeds. After all this, the police sirens stopped as if they turned all of the sirens off. I found that weird because they were still yelling at this person. It must have been about 20 minutes and eventually the yelling stops. The dog barking stops and the police sirens finally start again as all the cars drive away. But I'm guessing that they arrested this guy and somehow managed to do it all without a shootout. Eventually, two days later, the news breaks. This guy had actually robbed a local store and had made a runner on foot through the forest. The police caught up with him, but he was refusing to show his hands. The whole time he sat behind a tree. They waited up to 20 minutes for a dog unit or a canine unit as they call them to arrive. For the rest of that time, the police had no choice but to just stay put and yell orders at him for ages. He didn't fire back and eventually apparently he ended up going with them and lying flat on the floor and being put in cuffs and taken away. The school came close to that and thankfully he didn't go into this school, but that was a serious one. The year was 2002. I must have been in 6th or 7th grade at the time. We were in gym class and my teacher had just been called out to have a word with one of the other teachers in the corridor. We were all just told to continue with our exercises. I can't remember exactly what we were doing, but we had those floor mats out and we were doing something stupid like rolls or, you know, cartwheels and things. At the end of the day, we didn't realize what was about to be told to us and everyone was just messing about having fun. I enjoyed gym class. It was the one lesson that I really actually relaxed and just got to mess around in. However, when our gym class teacher came back in the door, she immediately shut the door behind her, locking it firmly. She turned to us and yelled, the school's on lockdown, get in now. What this meant was we had rehearsed that if she ever said this, we would run straight to the storage room, which was at the back of the gymnasium. Now this room must have been about 15 feet long by 8 feet in width. It was tiny and somehow we had to try and cram 25 of us inside of this little storage room. We'd managed it in the rehearsal, but we didn't know. 
This time, we were crying, and a lot of us were shaking like crazy. At the time, it was hot, very hot. So as we're all in there, with the door shut, begging that nothing comes of this, we ask our teacher what happened. She said she can't tell us, and she just says stay calm and stay quiet. Now, there's no lock on the storage room door. There was only a lock on the gymnasium door. But if someone got through there, then they would have had free reign over all of us. So, there we were, 25 of us all crammed into this storage room with gymnastic equipment all around us. There were shelves on either side stretching really high up. The room itself went very high but it wasn't big which was unusual. It was a room designed to store as much as possible and not a class of 25 people hiding from a shooter. The school was on lockdown, it wasn't officially announced because at the time my school thought it was a good idea to not officially announce the lockdown as this would give the shooter ideas that everyone knew he was going around. Everyone was listening for shots but we never heard any the whole time. It was really weird but we were still super scared as this had never happened before. We'd only ever had one drill, one rehearsal. Obviously, that's just a laugh. It's messing around. You never actually think it's going to happen even though at the time we were in a pretty rough school and me and my family had just moved to the area because of my dad for work reasons. We must have been in that storage unit for around three and a half minutes. I know, not very long, but it felt like three and a half hours. Maybe at the time it was longer, I didn't have a watch and I wasn't exactly keeping track of it. I was on the brink of tears because I seriously considered that this may be the last time I ever saw my parents was during the morning of that day. Eventually, we start hearing knocking and banging noises on the gymnasium door. This is the door that my teacher locked, but it's really, really far away from the storage cabinet. It must have been around two or even 300 meters. A gymnasium's massive. It's a full-size basketball court, which has benches either side and even spectator seats. This is something that we could hear though because we were all silent. No one was making a sound as we were instructed to say silent by our teacher. And in our minds, it was the only logical thing to do if we wanted to leave that school day alive. But when we heard the knocking and the rustling at the gymnasium door, that was it. I saw my teacher take a deep breath and she looked like she was trying so hard to hold herself together. Have you ever seen someone that you look up to almost break down? It really makes you lose trust in them and also makes you feel double as doomed. When your leader and your role model is also struggling, then you know it's time for you to get worried. So there we were. Some of the girls were crying, but I wasn't. The teacher was on the brink of having a breakdown and I remember seeing her arms shaking. She seemed unsure as to what to do. She was questioning whether she should have gone out and opened the gymnasium door, but she knew that was the wrong thing. The weird thing about this whole situation was we hadn't practiced in our drill or rehearsal what to do after everything was cleared. There were no code words as I remember rightly, or at least my teacher didn't know that, and my teacher seemed absolutely shell-shocked at the fact someone was trying to knock on the gymnasium door and try and open it. It could have been anyone on the other side, and although it was more likely to be the police or a teacher, it could have been the very shooter that had had the school locked down. Another 10 minutes pass, or what felt like 10 minutes, but like I said, my perception of time was all over the place. I couldn't have any idea of how long we were actually in there, because fear really brings you into the moment. We were still there, and at this point the knocks had got louder, the shaking of the door handle had increased and become more violent. My teacher was unsure of what to do, she really had no clue. Eventually, we hear the door open from the other side. They had a lock, and somehow, someone had opened it or got the key. We hear footsteps coming closer to the storage unit and that was it. My teacher starts squealing and literally looks like she's about to start crying and beg for her life. Someone knocks on the storage cabinet door, and then my teacher just basically holds it shut. All of a sudden, we hear a familiar voice. That familiar voice is our principal. She opens the door and literally collapses on her knees. 
I've never seen my gymnasium teacher so distraught in her whole life. And why would I? After this had just happened, my principal looked a wreck. She looked like she had been crying too. There were a team of police officers stood behind her that were fully armed. After all this, the students were let out of the storage cabinet and we were all able to sigh a massive sigh of relief. I didn't really know what to make of all this, and although it was shocking and worrying, finding out the facts of what actually happened, it turns out one of the kids had pretended that he had a gun. Long story short, apparently he was having an argument with one of the other students, and this turned into threats, which then led to false threats, having the whole school shut down, where they thought he was on the loose. Long story short, he ended up getting searched and detained, and it was all just lies. During year 10, I felt quite ill. I remember having the flu for like two months straight, and I took a good nine days off school. This meant that I missed the test. It was a really important test, and for those kids that missed the test, we had to basically go down and do it separately in like this extra room connected to the school. When I say connected to the school, it was literally like a shipping container, but one with windows and a little more modern. So there was around seven of us that had missed this test. We were all laid out and told to sit on specific desks. So the gaps must have been around five meters each way, so it wasn't exactly very far. But we were told to get our papers out and set out the task. There we were doing this test that was going to take us around two hours. It was a rather big test, it was specifically an English essay test. As we were sat there, we started hearing helicopters circling around us. This was completely unusual, and we'd never heard helicopters in our school, or around our school for that matter. There were no airports nearby, which kind of confused us. It was a massive distraction. Little did we know the whole time, we had all our windows open, all our doors open as it was quite warm. As we're breathing in the fresh air enjoying ourselves, trying to struggle at this difficult test to get the best grade possible, it turns out that the school next to us had announced on the system that they were going into immediate lockdown. The extra unit that we were in doing the test didn't have the intercom system connected. It had no speakers, so we didn't hear the announcement. <laughs> so there we were, sat in our unit, basically doing a test for two hours while the whole school was on lockdown. It turns out the helicopters above us were police helicopters searching for a guy on the loose brandishing two large kitchen knives. He had just been dumped by his wife and basically went crazy running out the house with two kitchen knives from the drawer and just going nuts. Apparently he was running within 400 meters of the school premises. All the while the school was completely shut and locked down but there we were just sat there taking a test with every window and door open imaginable. The first helicopter was circling us for a good 10 minutes, then eventually two others turned up. The noise was so loud that I literally couldn't hear myself thinking and it became an issue. Some of the test invigilators that were basically there to make sure we kept the rules were even walking outside of this unit making sure or trying to figure out what was happening. They came back in every now and then and looked super confused, but little did they know that the school next door to us was on full lockdown where all the students were practically cornered up under a desk. Eventually, I pass the test, finish it all up and the helicopters leave. The teachers get into huge amounts of trouble and the invigilators were apologised to after what could have happened was something goes severely wrong, turned out to be the police apprehended the man safely before he made it near or nearer to the school premises. We had no hope in hell. There was seven of us, we were year 10 boys and a couple girls and some old 60 or 70 year old invigilators. There's no way we could have defended ourselves against even an average sized man welding two kitchen knives. The police were looking for him as they had no clue whereabouts he was, hence why the helicopters were circling our school premises for a good 20 minutes in total. We wondered what the noises were for so long until eventually we tried to come out the unit and walk through the door into the main school area and all the doors were locked. Eventually the doors were opened and the school students explained to us what had happened. 
Everyone laughed it off, but it wouldn't have been funny if something actually had happened, and there we were just sat in the open, with no idea what was really going on.